Hello, I'm Dr. Gina Cooper, the senior in the software web and information systems programs. I have degrees in mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, and a PhD in computer engineering from Wright State University. I was a mechanical engineer and I did finite element analysis, and now I get to teach programming, which is my favorite subject. I started programming when I was 10 years old and I've loved it ever since. And I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Subanthan, who I work closely with. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. I'm pleased to be here with Dr. Cooper and all of you. I'm Dr. Subanthan, I'm the National Faculty Chair for the Engineering Technology Programs. I'm also an ABIT IEEE Program Evaluator and a Licensed Professional Engineer. My degree is in Electrical Engineering from Texas a and University and in Education Leadership. Like Professor Cooper, I love to teach as well. As DeVry faculty, we primarily teach students pursuing undergraduate degrees and certificates in, in you know, technology programs. We are excited to share our insights about the skills that may be useful to careers in the tech industry. Our curriculum helps students gain hands-on experience and the skills needed to help prepare you for a career in industries using machine learning, automation, cybersecurity, software development, and many more. During today's discussion, we'll do our best to address questions we often get from our current students, including those who are entering this industry for the very first time, those who are already there working in the field and then looking for the education to move up in your career ladder, and those who are just lifelong learners and wanting to learn more. And we want to hear about what you want to learn and more of you. So please include your questions in the chat and then we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Dr. Cooper? Well, let's get started with what goals our students typically want to achieve and how DeVry's technology programs can help prepare them to meet those goals. I teach many of our introductory courses for DeVry's technology programs and my students are often in various stages of their careers. There are some who are IT customer service representatives looking to upskill to help prepare themselves down an IT career path. Some students are looking to completely change their careers. I've had students from farmers to hairstylists to chefs looking to get into cybersecurity programming and machine learning. Several students have been working in the industry and want to challenge themselves by learning some new skills. Others want to learn the fundamentals of software development or machine learning. I've had students who are single parents, active military, and even some students who faced homelessness. I actually had one student a couple years back. She was homeless with her two kids and for part of the time during her education. And when she walked across the stage, she was crying. I was crying. I gave her a big hug and it was so rewarding. It made me realize and remember why I do what I do. I had many similar experiences as well as Dr. Cooper with the students. I recall teaching students in their introduction to engineering technology programs and later seeing them at the graduation and then knowing that after they came across several challenges and then still pursued to complete their educational goals. That was a rewarding experience. Dr. Cooper? You're so right, Dr. Suganthan. So whatever your goals are, DeVry has a variety of programs from certificates to bachelors, which we'll build on later, that offer classes to help you prepare for your career plan. Our Programming classes have fun and challenging projects that cover the fundamentals of programming with Python, such as if statements, loop, functions, variables, expressions. These classes establish a good foundation in programming, and other classes build upon these topics with more advanced programming and data analytics subjects. We have courses that cover database, writing SQL queries, creating websites, using CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and learning the entire software development process. And in these classes, you also gain hands-on real-world experience, so working with the technical program should be familiar to you after you graduate. Every technical course has an embedded application component built in. Students utilize various hardware and software to apply the theory from their coursework to practical applications. These might include software tools such as multi-sim and MATLAB for circuit analysis and simulation, and even Proteus and hardware components like Arduino Omega R2560, ESP32 microcontrollers. Students also utilize various sensors and actuators to do their course projects. Students use the TechCo kit to do their course projects as well. And then if you look at it, what is in their kit? The kit has various microcontrollers, sensors such as you know, ultrasonic sensors, motion detectors, light sensors, 
processors, LCDs, routers, LEDs, and other devices. And to give you an example, students in their introduction to, to technology course use this kit to create a security system where they can monitor the system from their smartphone. So if the security is breached, then they will get an alert. You know, that's a great project as well. Talking about security, we have students who are interested in variety of other technology fields as well. But there are a few where our students are very passionate, including cybersecurity. And let's think about it. What is the importance of cybersecurity? Personally, I have had experience of security breach with my credit card. Where, you know, many of you may have had the same experience. I mean, you go through all the hassle of working with your bank and going through all that, uh, you know, trouble to get things back to normal. And we hear these stories over and over again. So we teach our students in our courses, you know, how to secure your home network and computers. What about password protection and two-step authentication? There are dedicated projects in our information security course, such as Security 285, which deals with that. We also teach students about hardware with routers and software configuration. What about firewalls? and user authentications. We have lab assignments in our information technology and networking course, which deals with firewalls and user authentications. So we have several options for students to learn more about this in detail in the other courses. What about automation? We see automation in our day-to-day -day activities. These could range from programmable coffee makers, and as you get up in the morning and then walk and then your coffee is ready, or to a vehicle with self-driving options. Skills such as analytical ability, troubleshooting, problem solving, and programming skills are critical to successfully install, implement, and configure smart systems. Let me talk about a project which my students do in the introduction to digital devices class. They build a smart traffic light system. They will use a microcontroller, a USB 32, and they will start with a simple traffic light. They will expand to two sets of light, then they will also add a crosswalk. When you push the button, it's going to make all the lights go red and display the sign to walk and then give them a counter. They will further expand the project by adding a buzzer and an emergency light, which could be controlled by their cell phone. So an emergency vehicle can make all the lights to go red, then pass through the intersection. They can also configure this light system to be one set of lights to be a major street, another set of lights to be a minor street, where the major street is always red, uh, always green, and the minor street is always red, unless it detects a traffic. They use a motion detector to do that. And uh, these projects are very cool, and then they really enjoy that. Dr. Cooper? That does sound like a really fun project. Thanks for discussing those fields, but let's talk a little bit more about machine learning and software development. So what is machine learning and artificial intelligence? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's training a machine using algorithms to respond to external stimuli. And there's many different applications. There's applications in robotics. There's also natural language processing. For example, home automation systems like the Alexa or your Google Home, uh, those use natural language processing algorithms. There's also recommender systems. So Netflix has a recommender system. If you were to watch a, um, t a movie or TV show or something, Netflix is recommending other movies or shows based on what you're currently watching and your user preferences. So they use a recommender algorithm um, in a machine learning algorithm to determine what your preferences might be. There's also reinforcement learning algorithms. So these are used a lot in games. If you think of like a game, you might have a robot traveling through a maze and there would be which direction should the robot go? Well, there is a reinforcement, positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement for that robot when they're traveling through the maze. Those are that's used quite a bit in games. Um, then you have classification and regression analysis, which is used a lot in forecasting sales, a lot, a lot in business analysis. Classification will classify a problem yes or no, whereas regression can actually give you a, a potential sales forecast. Some skills you need need for this are Python, uh, low-code machine learning programs, um, algorithms, data visualization, data analytics. And in fact, in my machine learning class, we do a really fun project about diabetes where um, you ha we have a data set and it has a lot of information, demographic information of patients. 
So it has their name, their, I'm sorry, not their name, but their age, their weight, their height, their meds that they're on, their insulin level, different information like that um, in this data set. And based on the demographic information, the medication, the insulin, all these different data points, the algorithm will determine will they be readmitted to the hospital for diabetes or not. So that's an example of a classification problem that we do in the class where we're trying to determine what are the factors that are important in this particular problem to determine if these people will be readmitted to the hospital um, for diabetes or not. And what can you do with that information? Well, we're, when you we focus in on this these factors, you can give this information to doctors, to hospitals, so they can manage resources better and determine what patients they need to focus on. Um, so in addition to machine learning, there's also software development, and we use software every day. We have um, integration with a variety of software systems, such as your web database, application, your operating system, and then the skills you need are programming, web, database, operating systems, scripting, and we do a really fun project that combines a lot of these different topics in my Python programming class. So what the students will do is they'll download two weeks worth of weather data in into a database and then using um, Python, and then they'll review this data, do some queries on it, and then pull that data into Python, use the Python data analytics modules to create graphs and charts depicting this data. And so then they can look at the data, you know, and try to predict based on two weeks of past weather data, can we predict weather data in the future? You know, so you're looking at these data analytics modules, really fun things, and that's a fun project that people do to determine and view their data and kind of tell a story about their data. That's an awesome project, Dr. Cooper. Dr. Cooper and I can probably talk for hours about these industries and the technical skills you will learn. However, even though it's important to understand the technical skills, it is also equal equally important to have the soft skills too. We help our students learn a variety of soft skills during our classes, but one important skill is to have, especially when you are working in the tech industry, is to be a lifelong learner. I always tell my students the three things. First thing is you should have the desire to learn, number one. And then you should have a willingness to in invest the time to learn, and also the willingness to execute what you are learning in your labs and your course projects. We have undergraduate and alumni who have come back to pursue higher degrees after working in the industry. Come to think of it, I've had students who graduated from the network and communications management undergraduate program, and after a couple of years, they have come back to pursue a degree in, in a graduate degree in information systems management or even in networks and communications management. So communication skills are very important to have it in the industry, but especially in the technology careers. The graduates are not only to communicate with their team members, but also with their customers on a daily basis, and that is very, very important. Typically, students work in teams in projects and also interact with each other during our discussions. And we can always see, you know, they will post questions about their project, get feedback from their peers, and they are going back and forth, and then we see that all the time in our courses. Dr. Cooper? I agree with you, Dr. Sudanthan, that lifelong learning and communication is important. However, there are a few other soft skills that are taught throughout our classes. The course projects in the class require problem solving skills. Students solve programming problems and then communicate their results in presentations or reports. So for example, in the weather database Python programming class, what we do is the students will create a presentation that contains everything from the project, their code, flow charts, then you know, graphs, the SQL queries that they run, everything into this presentation that they can add to their portfolio. It's professional so they can showcase all the skills they gained and what they've learned. Um, in some programming classes, students make predictions based on data and create graphs to visually display data and results. For example, the machine learning class with our diabetes analysis, um, they created some graphs and basically telling a story because that's what your data can do. You can tell a story with your data. So we have covered how our classes can help you prepare for the real in technology. So let's discuss some of the programs that you can specialize in. We currently offer three associate degrees and seven baccalaureate degrees in different areas of 
knowledge. And some of these programs allow you to pick your own specialization. So let's take an example, uh, associate degree in information technology and networking. Your students can select tracks in automation and electronic systems or information systems or even in network systems administration. If you look at our engineering technology and electronics baccalaureate programs, students have the option to, for the standard option where they take courses with communications and control systems or pick a track in renewable energy. Similarly, our computer information systems program also has multiple tracks. If you look at our software development program, there are dedicated courses in data analytics, software design, and mobile applications. We also know that having the flexibility to go at your own pace is important. Some students want to finish their degree in the quickest time possible, while others want to take their time due to working a full-time job, caring for their family, or are unsure about where to start. Certificates can be the perfect way to start or ease back into your education because you can stack these credentials into a bachelor's degree. DeVry also recently launched seven Seven new undergraduate technology certificate programs for learners who want to gain a new skill or help them progress in earning their degree. So some of these are information technology essentials, network essentials, cybersecurity, programming essentials. There's a web and mobile application development certificate, and I teach the, um, the Android app class in, in that, and I love that class. Students have created all different kinds of apps because you can create your own app. One student created a Simon, that, remember that game Simon? with different colors. One student created an app like that. Another person made a grocery list app. Um, I had another person make a, a recipes app with pictures of their recipes. And they put the app on their Android phone or tablet and they love it because they can take it with them and show, show people what they've done. So it's a really fun class. Uh, we have software design and solutions certificate and data mining and analytics, which is my favorite because I love using data mining and analytics to tell a story about your data. So now let's hear from our audience. So please keep posting your questions in the chat and we'll try our best to answer as many as we get right now. So we understand that there was an issue with the live stream pausing, so we'll be sharing the full video later as well. So uh, if you look at the, the question, you know, typically one of the questions we get from the students is, Professor, how much time we need to spend in our course? And typically, you know, we have a live session every week. We are students and the professors, you know, we meet and then typically two to three hours. And then on, besides that, they need to work on the assignments and homework and projects for approximately seven to eight hours, and it depends on the course, but that is an average time frame. There's another question there, Professor Cooper. It says, how many hands-on projects are there typically, and do they all include kits that get sent to students? It depends on the class, the hands-on projects. So some classes will have, like Professor Suganthan mentioned, the uh, IoT, you know, kits where, where you have, you know, microprocessors. And then some classes, like the software development class that I teach a lot, they, uh, we, we don't have much hard hardware, but you're using a lot of software because you're using programs that students tend to love writing code, or at least I love writing code and hope that everyone else does too. That's great. Uh, the other question that comes to my mind, uh, Professor Cooper, is you know, students sometimes also ask uh, what kind of help they can get, you know, while they're taking a class. Uh, and we tell them, you know, there's always, uh, we call it tutorial hurdles, we are every faculty member offer via WebEx, you know, either they can attend or they can even make one-to-one -one appointments. And also there is tutor.com. There are so many options available for students to get additional help. Yes, and I, I mean, I tell students you can, so I have students who text me. We set up one-on-one -on -one times to meet, you know, if, you, if the students get stuck on anything. So there's a lot of opportunities to reach out and help. It's fabulous for us to be able to connect with our students students too and you know get to know each other because that's the best part of teaching. Well that's all for questions. 
Um, I want to thank you, Dr. Suganthan. I want to thank you all for joining our LinkedIn Live. If you're interested in enrolling or learning more, please reach out to a representative or go to our website at devry.edu. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Dr. Coco. It was great sharing with you. Thank you. Thank you.